Hi, my name is Luis Ort and I'm going to present you our work called Wilson Proving Your Mikkelsen Smart Contracts in Y3. First of all, what is the Mikkelsen language? It is a low-level smart contract language for the Tezos blockchain. It is a stack rewriting language with a functional paradigm and it is strongly typed. Therefore, it is amenable to formal verification. I will elaborate on some details of this language in a few slides. But why should we verify our smart contracts? As you all know, among other reasons, smart contracts are immutable once we deploy them into the blockchain. Let me show you some of the motivation that led us to develop Wilson. Uh, we wanted to be able to provide both proofs of correctness and safety of Mikkelsen smart contracts. And we wanted to automate these proofs as much as possible, as well as minimize the user interaction with the underlying proof tool. And we would also like to work at a Mikkelsen level. And why is that? If we ever wanted to provide uh, the Tezos blockchain with some sanity aware checks, we need to work at a Mikkelsen level. Uh, plus, by working at Mikkelsen, uh, we're not tied to a particular uh, smart contract language because every Tezos smart contract language compiles down to Mikkelsen. So this tool can be seen or used as a verification backend for all of them. And if you really wanted to provide support for a particular high level language, uh, like for instance, if you want to do a certifying compiler, uh, we would need the Mikkelsen side as well. So the first steps that we needed to accomplish in order to, to uh, achieve Wilson uh, were to implement an axiomatic semantics for Mikkelsen inside Y3, as well as a Mikkelsen parser so that we can use the Y3 API for translating Mikkelsen into YML. In this picture, you can see uh, a representation of the architecture of Wilson uh, so we start with the Mikkelsen written contract, which is then parsed, and the Y3 API alongside the axiomatic semantics produces a YML contract, which can then be proved inside the Y3 framework. Back to the Mikkelsen language, as you all know, it has four primitive types for constants, namely string, natural, integers, and bytes. As of version 1.3.0, Y3 supports strings as a built-in type. These types are almost in a one-to-one -one correspondence, uh, except for type net and bytes. For type net, uh, we simply define it as an integer with an invariant that ensures that its value is always greater or equal than zero. As for type bytes, we define it as a sequence of bytes, uh, which are simply bit vectors of size 8. Since Mikkelsen is a stack rewriting language, its execution stack only contains either data or instructions. Therefore, we define stack T as a sequence of data. It is worth mentioning, though, that our semantics is a shallow embedding of Mikkelsen in YML. And as an example of such semantics, I'm going to show you the semantics for the instruction add, starting with the, its preconditions. Uh, here you can see uh, that the first precondition uh, accounts for the size of the stack, which has to be uh, equal or greater than two, one for each constant. The second one regards the possible combinations of the types that the other instruction accepts. As for post conditions, the first one ensures that the stack size decreases by one. The second one ensures that the type of the output is based on the type of the input. The third and fourth guarantee that the remaining of the stack values and types are unchanged. And finally, the last one is where we actually perform the computation. All of that put together looks a bit like this. So this is the complete axiomatization of the add function. Here's an example of the automatic translation mechanism. Take this Mikkelsen contract, which simply takes a natural number as a parameter and adds it to the one in the storage. Uh, this contract generated uh, this uh, um, YML code below the, the box, which you can see here, but let's move on to a more concrete case study, namely the factorial uh, contract. 
This construct receives as a parameter the number whose factorial is going to be calculated and stores the result in storage. It starts by dropping the previous storage and pushes an initial accumulator and iterator has a value 1. Then it compares the parameter value with 0 and if it's different it enters the loop to calculate the factorial. This example served as a testbed for our axiomatic semantics and therefore it was manually translated because our main purpose at this stage was to capture what our semantics could and could not do rather than the automation of the translation mechanism. We are currently working on improving the translation mechanism so that it could split crucial portions of the Michelson construct into separate functions in order to facilitate their proof. As an, an example of that, let's take a look at uh, this uh, loop body part. Uh, where the, the computation of the factorial actually happens. The precondition here uh, assures us that the value stored at the top of the input stack is in fact the value of the factorial up to the previous iterations. The last post condition ensures that the value stored at the top of the result stack is the value of the factorial up to the current iteration. The operation fact that we can see in this specification is the factorial definition from the Y3 standard library. This proof session uh, generated uh, over 2,800 verification conditions, which were proved by Z3 and Altergo. Here's a picture of that proof session. And let's move on some, to some of the main conclusions we drawn from this work. We successfully proved the first case studies of Mikkelsen smart contracts using an auto-active verification framework. We found that uh, algebraic data types are very hard for SMTs to work with. But we think that by going further in our shallow embedding, we can prove, we can improve proof automation. Has future work. Uh, we are developing a suitable uh, specification language for Mikkelsen so that we can embed our specification directly into Mikkelsen constructs. And uh, we also have to prove that our axiomatic semantics abides by Mikkel Mikkelsen operational semantics. We already have these operation semant operational semantics implemented in Y3 uh, and we intend to use this as target for our proof. Thank you for your attention and questions.